Hello, welcome to another tutorial. My name is Frank Walters and tonight we're going to do the double exposure effect. This effect is really cool and people seem to love it. So I, I created this tutorial for you that's quite fast. So first thing we want to do with our wolf picture, we want to crop the image. So press the C key on your keyboard. Let's crop the image. Just like that. Press the apply button. Now we want to click on the uh, selection brush tool here on the tools. And we make, want to make a selection of our woof. So to make a selection of the woof. All of the woof's face and his ears. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> Come to the contextual toolbar where here where it says refine and click on that. And now you want to paint over the hairs of the woof. It's a really nice looking wolf. Keep painting. That's it. That's good enough. Press the apply button. And then the selection selected part of the wolf's nose, but we don't want it selected. So just click one time, click to get rid of that. We just want it on the border of the wolf. Okay, now we want to remove the background from this image. Our wolf is currently selected, so what we want to do is that we want to invert the pixel selection. So come up here to the menu bar where it says select. Come down where it says invert pixel selection. So now it, the selection is now inverted. What that means is no longer on the wolf, but it's on the wolf's outline and the background. So to remove the background, you want to press Command or Control X on your keyboard. Now the background has been removed. Press Command or Control D on your keyboard to deselect the selection. And that's where we want to be right now. Let's come over here to the forest image. And this is the image that we're going to place on top of our woof. But we don't want the image facing this way. We want it flipped horizontally. So the way we do that, if we come up here to the menu bar where it says document, come down to where it says flip horizontal and click on it. There you go. So now we're going to copy this image. So press Command or Control C on your keyboard. Come up back to the wolf and you're going to press Command or Control V two times. Click, click. Look over here in the layer sidebar. Now we have two backgrounds. Well, we have three backgrounds, but two forests and one wolf. Click and drag the top image layer to the bottom. And now we're going to rename these. So we're going to double click on the top one and just type forest top. Click on the bottom one, forest bottom. And then the middle woof layer, type woof. Good. Now we want to click on the top layer, the forest top, and change the opacity to 50%. So what that does, if you look at our image in the middle of the screen, uh, it shows the wolf and it shows the mountains and the uh, forest on top of the wolf. So the 50% so we can see the wolf through this image layer. So now we want to click on the wolf layer and we want to click go to the menu icons here to where the, it says the mask layer. Click on that. We want the first one. So click here. It should be a white layer mask. It takes a second. Why is it black? It makes no sense. Okay, we're just going to assume it's white because it should be white. It should not be black. I don't know why. So I'm going to press Command or Control Z to get rid of that. And then we're going to try it again. It should not be black. That It makes no sense. Why is it black? Okay, we're just gonna act like it's white because it should be white. Press B key on your keyboard for the brush tool. And if it's a white, see now it's switched to white. You see that? So there's a glitch in the program. So, so like I said, we're gonna pretend it's white and now it's white. So 
Uh, <clears throat> some software engineer needs to uh, figure that out. So we activated our paintbrush tool and come over here to the colors panel and then on the color panel you want to click on it. Come over here to the color menu icon and click on that and change it to wheel. <coughs> and since it's a white layer mask we want to paint in black. So make sure that the foreground color is black. You can also move the inner node here and make it black. Okay, good. Now let's come over here to the contextual toolbar. The width, let's see how big this is. The width is okay. Let's make it 350. Well, let's maximize our image. 350 and so that we maximize the image so that my image is the same size as your image. So 350 is a little bit too big. So let's lower that to 250. That's still a little small. So we'll make it 300. Okay, good. The opacity, we want 25%. The flow, 100%. And the hardness, we want 25%. Um, that's it. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to paint in black on the white layer mask. And that's going to bring back some of this forest, this bottom forest uh, image through the woof. So we don't, we don't really want all of the woof to be seen. So um, when you do this, th this is a very creative um, self-discovery type process. So what you want to do is that you want to click and drag in short, in short uh, strokes. So click, drag, click, drag. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag. You can hear my mouse, right? And what that does is that it makes it so that we have more control over our strokes. And I'm going to get rid of the hair is what I'm doing right now. The hair that's on the border of the woof. And then here on, on this part of the woof, I'm just going to paint and slide down. Because I, I, want, I want these uh, trees to come through the woof here. And, and we know it's a woof because of the woof's face right here. Okay, so that's pretty good. Okay. All right, so some of the ears, I don't really like the ears. So I'm going to change the, uh, the, um, the brush over here to white. And I'm going to lower the size of the brush diameter by pressing the left bracket key. And now when I paint in white, it's going to bring back some of the woof. So click and drag, click and drag, you know, short. Okay, come over the woof's face. Good. That looks really good. Bring back some more of the wolf right here. Okay, I think that looks fantastic. So now what we're going to do, so our double exposure effect is basically over because what we want to do is that we want somebody to look at our photograph and say, ah, there's a wolf there and that is the wolf's natural homeland and so it's pretty cool. So now I want to do one more thing <clears throat> to this image. I want to change some of the colors. The way that I wanted to do this is that I want to click on the top forest layer and the bottom forest layer so that they're both active. And the way you do that is you have one active and you hold down the command or control key on your keyboard and you click on the other layer. You do not want to, uh, let me start over, with just the bottom one active. You do not want to hold down shift and then click on the top one because then all the layers will be active. We don't want that. Okay, so click down here. So we just want to click on the bottom one, hold down the command or control key, and then click on the top forest layer. So now we want to add a color adjustment to these two uh, image layers. We're going to choose HSL, hue, saturation, and luminosity. <clears throat> so now when we change these colors, only the trees will change the color. So click and drag the hue shift to the right. And that looks really cool. See how the uh, the trees are more green now? So let's make it 115 degrees. And now with the saturation, we can make the green color of the trees uh, more intense. That's way too intense. Or more desaturated, like black and white. So I think 20% I think looks really nice. 
Okay, and then and they press this X button here to close this window. Okay, there you go. Here's our double exposure effect in Affinity Photo 2. We hope you like this tutorial. If you have any uh, images, like let's say you have a cat or you have a dog, and you want to match that picture of your cat or dog with some kind of scenery, you can uh, email me, and then I'd be I would love to do a tutorial using your photographs. Okay, so that's all we have tonight. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this double exposure effect. Bye.